Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another day of breakfast and a book. How many of you were ready to jump out of bed this morning and had a smile on your face and were ready to go? How many of you pulled the covers over your head and wanted to stay in bed a little bit longer? Sometimes I have mornings like that, too. I'm going to show you my mug of the day today. This mug is actually Kinsley's. Yes, we've been doing breakfast in a book so long now, I'm starting to run out of mugs to use at my house. So the mug part, you might have to see some repeats pretty soon. But for now, I have some of my kids' mugs that I can share with you too. This mug is has a picture of Mighty Mouse on it. So if you guys don't know what Mighty Mouse is, ask your parents if they can look it up on YouTube for you. It's an old Luke cartoon. I think you guys might like it. So today, we're going to read a story that you guys are very familiar with. How many of you have heard of the three little pigs before? Yeah, we've all heard that story, right? But that story is told by the pigs. Today, we're going to hear that story from a different point of view. We're going to hear that same story, but this time it's going to be told by the wolf. So this story is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. Do you think this story is going to be a little bit different since it was told by a different point of view? Let's read to find out. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it is all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheeps and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think that you were big and bad too. Like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back and once upon a time, time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was Pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, I fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No one answered. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on while I huffed. And I snuffled. What do you think is going to happen next? And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of the straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. So the sneeze and the collapse of his house killed the poor little pig. 
It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner laying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much, because he had built his house of, what did he make it with? Yeah, you're right, sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, Wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. What do you think is going to happen next? I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffled and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe this, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. What do you think? Do you believe the wolf and his perspective that he's bringing on the story? Do you think it was a sneezing accident? Now, you know, food will spoil if you just leave it in the open. So the only thing to do is what I did. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full. My cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family because he had made his house out of, yeah, bricks. I knocked on that brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me. What do you think is going to happen? He's got a brick house. So do you think a sneeze could knock this house down? What do you think he's going to do? Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home. Maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on again, I huffed, I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. And the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Wow. That last pig, he really is a cranky guy. Now, I usually am a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner, and they figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was framed. Do you know what it means if you've been framed? It means you were set up for something. 
but maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. What do you think? Did he do it on accident? Or do you think it was on purpose? And here's the real question. If the big bad wolf came knocking on your front door, would you loan him a cup of sugar? I don't know. I would like to say that I would be nice enough to do it. I think I might be a little bit nervous. How about you? Well, I hope you like the story, the true story of the three little pigs. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, everybody.